Merry Christmas, everyone. Hi. Welcome Good morning. Back. It's Monday, bright and early. I was going to say- Santa just came. I was going to say, I was going to say you're probably going to work, but I hope you're not. Yeah. I, I really hope, hope you're off. What, retail, health, and restaurants for the most part. Right. Yeah. I and like her. fucking Target and oh, God. Safeway, grocery and, stores. And I don't feel like it was always like that, right? Like I remember I remember driving down Contra Costa Boulevard and growing it being up. Like, and dead. It, like even Target was closed, but then it opened at like seven PM for people to shop. Or wait, no, that's Thanksgiving. I'm thinking Black Friday. Yeah. Thanksgiving they're usually closed. I think yeah. Christmas Eve they're definitely still open. People are getting last minute gifts. Yeah. And I, I can't imagine being one of those. Oh people. my God. I went out <laughs> yesterday to get last minute gifts, which was Friday. Yeah, this is pre recorded. Um went out on Friday before Christmas on Fifth Avenue. And what what part of Fifth? I went to Saks Fifth. Um, it was like between forty seventh and fifty second. So you were also near Rockefeller? Yep. I was uh, I went into Saks Fifth and I actually <laughs> There was a line and I just, I, there was another set of doors that people were coming out of and I just went in that side. Oh, like a line to get into the yeah. store. I thought you meant to check out. No. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Why the fuck like, would you wait in that? That's the type of thing. And no one was facilitating the line. So of I think not. people were just like waiting in a line because they saw people waiting outside and they just like queued up. Sheep. Yes. Sheeple. Literally. And I like looked, it was... And it, the door wasn't far. It was one set of doors and another set of doors, like okay. an in-out door. Gotcha. And they were on the left side and I walked up coming from the right and I looked at the line and I was like, there's no worker. People are just waiting to get in. And the line was long, like halfway Inside, down the block. Was there one? Like a little clicker? No. I'm just thinking of like a club. Nothing. And it was like, I mean, it was busy, but it wasn't like capacity like no. fire marshal they need to have people outside no so i looked at huh. the line and i was like and i saw people coming out on the right and i was like what the fuck so i just like walked in yeah what and i was like there's no like i want to walk out there and be like you don't have to wait in line <laughs> but the people say people, people are gonna people are gonna do what they want to do and honestly I, right now i feel like 90 percent of them are tourists where they're like happy to be out there like taking pictures of the line like this is the yeah New York especially sax fifth on fifth on christmas weekend yeah. like that's a it's a it's check pretty fucking iconic yeah that's like a check mark right I, I i was actually just texting carly she so our friend carly lives in connecticut and i think she's coming here to go to the rockefeller center tonight oh fun i i might meet up with them um just depending but I'm also like, what the fuck? It's going to be Yeah, insane. it's going to be crazy, especially with a newborn. Right, of course. But like, it's just like the the crowds. Right. Like the crowds. Uh, well, and with a stroller. She'll probably hold him. She does the like, because he's oh, still so little. right. She still does the, um, what are the Like baby bajorn. Is that what it is? I don't know. Just like the wrap that up? Yeah. Your burrito wrap. We're the last week. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be kind of a funny bit if we went through and someone showed us like a baby list of products. baby items and we no, no not a list because then we can like the list might say what it is what the item is w like show us the item and what it's used for oh and there's probably so many things where we'd be like what I was thinking the opposite like go by name like baby Bajorn and we have to, to try and like decide what, is what it is I think it's can the wrap yeah I'll it look it up Bajorn B J friend yeah i don't a french baby a baby <laughs> i think it's okay it's a brand yeah these things oh my god god uh, baby having a baby is so expensive oh my god yeah they're 240 dollars oh the like backpacks uh, yeah i've seen these with that's probably like dogs. the ferrari of <laughs> yeah baby care carriers right i've seen this one on tiktok the tush baby um here it's on the left for you um oh me too right, she passes them out at disneyland yes i've Kinda seen smart. that i really I, I thought that was cool ah that looks like it would just hurt my back yeah i think babies would just hurt my back yeah the hip thing was, aren't you just like not supposed to you're just you can't do anything with a baby yeah i think that's the general consensus oh my God, this one's called tactical baby gear <laughs> and it's a man and it's a man holding course, it because they have to like tailor it to like 
the dads. Yeah. They're going to want to feel manly buying it. Right. And not buying the like cute it's a gun, gun hustler for my baby. My baby. <laughs> Oh, this is crazy. The little bouncer thing from Baby Bajorn is two sixty. Oh, I'm sorry for all you mothers out there. Well, the and thing fathers. is, like, is it necessary? I don't know. I think so. I think. Uh, you mean like the price point? Uh, just all these things. Like they are expensive, but like having every our little didn't like have shit like that. Right. It's just it's such an industry now. It is, and there's something for everything, and like right. Moms in the fucking 1800s and have baby bajorn. They're, they're <laughs> right. Like, right. Well, they were also dying of the plague at like 15. Right. It, I don't know. You get the you, ebb and flow. It, right. It's all <laughs> yin and yang in this town. <laughs> I feel like you could throw that behind like any debate. Any phrase. I'm like, you can't argue that. Like, yeah. it's, kind of, it's just kind of like, it's, it's, what it is. <laughs> it's, the, it's the ebb and yeah, flow. Yeah. I would, I've actually thought about this a lot. I would be really bad at debating because I'd be like, yeah, you're also right. I feel like it would depend what you're debating about. Because yeah. if you're really passionate about it, you, you'll you'll get there. Yeah, but I'm I'm so like sh- if you're passionate about something, like how could I not believe you? <laughs> you know, <Oof>. <laughs> <laughs> that and that's the epitome of people thinking everything they learn on TikTok is real. Yeah, TikTok University, man, it's you you do scary learn a world. lot. There yeah, you can like- learn a lot. But I've I've just I see I don't I don't, I don't I've always yeah I don't believe that, and I've always been like. I've noticed this this about myself since I was little, to be honest. Like, I used to watch those QVC commercials, and I used to be just so... I love those. There's no way those work. Like, any of yeah. this works. Yeah. I'm such a skeptic when yeah. it comes to, like, products. When it comes to marketing. Marketing. I think also because yes. of our background. Like, we know the literal right. strategies behind the shit. Like, like, I don't know if a lot of you guys know this. This is definitely more of a common one, but I'm sure not everybody knows it. When you have sales on websites and it and it crosses out the old price, right? So it's thirty nine ninety nine and now it's um we'll say twenty four ninety nine. I guarantee you that that old price wasn't thirty nine ninety nine. It was probably like thirty seven or even thirty five. But they cross out an old price that looks so much more expensive to make that sale price look so much better. Right. It's all a lot. And they can do that. They can really get away well, yeah, with that. Yeah, they could do that because the only number that really matters is their um, the price of the product made when it lands at their facility. Mm-hmm. So what they're paying for the product, it's probably like between three and five bucks. And yeah. they have the capability to adjust their profit margin. Whenever. To what, whenever and to whatever they want it to be. Yep. So like the profit margin will be thin when they're getting a lot of sales, but then they'll up it when they, you know, want to make more money. It's just crazy. I remember when I, I actually learned that during my studies at FITM. And I, like I remember that day and being like, <gasps> people are just what? fucking with us. A- everything, like e- all the packaging, like everything is just psychological little game to make us think we're getting a bang for our buck or even like you I see this all over TikTok this is at least on my side of the TikTok people going like nutritionists going to the stores and picking up things that are like marketed super organic looking right yeah and then they flip it over and they're like this ingredient is bad this ingredient is not even organic but they I guess uh to have the USDA organic seal on your product I think it's only like a certain sixty percent of your ingredients have to be organic. What? Like just That's a little shit insane. like that. It's really Merry sad. Christmas. This love is love capitalism. I love consumerism. Look at our cute holiday mugs that we probably got on sale for nine ninety nine. Originally twelve ninety nine, but wholesale three cents. Yes. Actually, your mom got these. No, I think your aunt got these for us. They had hot chocolate bombs in them. Yeah. Thanks, Carol. (laughs) Me and my boyfriend celebrated um, just like a little Christmas dinner, just us two. We went out to this Italian restaurant down in Soho, and it's called Piccola Mm. Astoria. So good. It's so good. And it's like traditional Sicilian vibe cuisine. cuisine the people like yeah all the you, servers are all Sicilian. The, yeah all the servers bella like they call me bella love Lucky. it 
Where the hell have you been, Loka? <laughs> Imagine. Um, but they they didn't do this when me and you went, but periodically throughout the night, they'll like stop and turn the music really loud and they make the lights flash and they all start singing and get everyone to like stand up and dance. <laughs> and, and, well, not everyone, but she'll the waitress was like picking people out of the out of like wow. their seats and getting them to dance. Yeah. And she picked me. <gasps> you but, video? No, he tried yeah. to get one in time, but it I was wasn't up quick. there. Yeah, it was too quick. But I was wearing this like um like off the shoulder white sweater uh -oh. with <laughs> with no bra. Oh, so oh, no. <laughs> so I'm up in the middle of the restaurant. Everyone's staring at me in this waitress. You're the only one dancing with her. Yes. Shit. Yeah, I'm the only one up. And I'm like, I'm like trying to hold my sweater down, but like I'm she's like like lifting me up. And I just know my tits were everywhere. And we were so out I was obviously here while Alex is getting ready and I I had just bought that sweater too, and we were talking about how like it's cute, but you can't move your arms, right? Like you gotta wear it to like a chill dinner where you're like you're not I'm not doing you're not moving anything. your arms. Because then it'll ride up to your shoulders all weird. It'll ride up and like so it's <laughs> So it's dance. off the shoulder. Yeah. Arms flailing. It's Arms. off the shoulder and it has like this little flap that covers over like a second layer of your boobs. I think so, it's a fold. I would call it a flap. <laughs> like a fold. There we go. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's a fold of the fabric to create this like extra layer across your boobs. But that obviously yeah. when I'm like flailing about is lifted. It like rolls, it rolls up. up. Yeah. So I'm just I'm just out there, and there's hey. like they loved families. It. <laughs> they loved it. Like that's some Sicilian shit. Yeah, whatever. It was fun. I was yeah. When I was dancing. It was yeah, cute. It was a good moment. I love that place. It uh, like it was a vibe. We were Alex and I went there honestly just last week too. Like it's it's such a vibe, and it really does feel authentic. It, it felt like it felt like Palermo. Like it felt mm. like actual Sicily, and I feel like grateful to be in new york because there's a lot of places that are like around all over the map that try to bring the culture somewhere new right with like a little aesthetic things and like the, even the music and like obviously the cuisine and the menu but they're like they really oh did yeah it. like you they're feel from like they're from there. sicily right they're all actually from there like they're they're not just like doing the stereotypical things like mm -mm. It, it felt real yeah at least from when i it, it really does so if you're in the area, there's actually but multiple locations of that restaurant. Um, yeah. We looked at the bottom of the menu. It was, uh, oh, yeah. Wasn't it like Montana, Mo Montana, New York. New York. I think there was a Miami. I'm pretty sure there was a Miami. Yeah. I think there's like two or three in New York also. I think there might be one in Brooklyn. Yeah. But yeah, Montana was so rich. So out of pocket. It, Going to Montana too, like. It's got to be different. Yeah. <laughs> They're not doing this. I don't. <laughs> I don't know. I I can't imagine like a Sicilian living in Montana. It just seems so yeah, different. Yeah. Like, why would you land there? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe that's mm. just very like coast coast mind coast minded. mentality. Yeah, that's the word I'm trying to find. Yeah. Coast minded. <laughs> Co coast mental. The coastmans. <laughs> I got. Oh my God, Kristen! It was a special. So like, I hope it's a special when we go again. Sounds special. I got a beef tartare. Oh, well, with, hey, proud of you. With, Fuck yeah. yeah. It, but it didn't come with bread, so I was just raw dogging it. Well, so there's bread on the table, no? Yeah. There's only one piece, and I, I got through half them. of it. Like, yeah. But it came with goat <laughs> cheese. eating it, it with, like cereal. Literally. Came with goat cheese and figs and mm. red pepper and like pickled red peppers. Mm. Oh, it was Yum. so, so fucking good. I got that. We got, um, the rice balls, what are those called? Arancini. Arancini. Yeah, Arancini. Um, a couple glasses of red wine. And then I got a wild boar ragu with black truffle pasta. And then he got the special. It was, um, I forget what the sauce was, but it was a it, maybe a pistachio sauce? No, he wouldn't get pistachio. I don't like pistachio. It was a green sauce, but it wasn't pesto. It was probably, I'm telling you, they put pistachio on everything in Sicily. Yeah, I, and I don't imagine, like it. I can't imagine him getting a 
pistachio. I don't know, but it was a green sauce and it was um, gnocchi. Mm. And it came with like really thin melted slices of brie cheese layered on top of it. And um, like in between the layers of brie cheese was layers of prosciutto. Oh, that was good. I could eat that right now. Both like everything was insane. Damn, I'm hungry. Yum. I actually have some pasta left. We both have some. I might have that for breakfast. You could have a little taste. Yeah, I at least want to taste it. Was it too truffly or was it like no? no. Like I could have gone more truffly. More truffle. Yeah, I do like, like a lot of truffle. Sprinkle your salt. Yeah, Be good. There's a there's a fine line though. I think some places places just dump it to be like yeah, like when expensive. you order like truffle fries at a bar, it could be a lot. Yeah, it could be a lot. They probably use truffle oil. Yeah. It's cheaper too. Cheaper and it's just, it just it goes a long way. Yeah, it feels it's probably more concentrated. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, no, they do it right. Oh my god, it was so good. I didn't finish it though because I was so full from all your dancing. From all my dance, I was exhausted from dancing. From dancing. What wine did you get? Um, what's it called? I don't know. A red wine. Did you the Chianti? No, he got that though. Oh, nice. He got the Chianti, and then I got. It starts with M. I don't remember. Merlot. No, it wasn't something that we know. Milk. Milk I got the milk. I got the milk. I got a glass of milk with my Mm -hmm. black truffle pasta and my Mm. raw beef. (laughs) Milk with beef (laughs) tartare. That feels like, that feels the same as like, have you got, I've, I've, uh, what's blue, uh, blue jam in LA? Blue jam. Is that the name of that cafe? It's like, oh, super overpriced. Yes. I, one time I got a protein bowl there, like a breakfast protein bowl, and it was quinoa with chicken and an egg on top, and it felt so weird eating my chicken, chicken. with an egg. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, that feels like the same as like drinking milk oh, with a beef. Like, right. I don't What's know. chicken for breakfast? It was like a, it was, I think it was literally called like the LA body bowl. Hate that. Yeah. LA really markets yeah. shit to be LA, LA, but you don't really get like New York shit here. Well, like a New York bagel and like a New York slice. But that's like actually New York. Right. It's not like they're just making a cute little name for that one restaurant. Right. Like that's a real thing. Right. The same way, like I'll even give California this, like we have a California burrito that you can get from several types of places. And like a California roll. Right. It's like a consistent name. Oh, California burritos. French LA fries restaurants it. though. They're just like. Right. Melrose, Melrose bowl. Oh, um, the Melrose salad. Yeah. From. What's it called? Oh, so good. I miss that place with their... Um, it's Argentine and food. Is this the M, maybe? I think I thought it was an A. I don't know. Uh, Luna's? Uh, Lu- Lulu's? Lu- no. That's, I think that's here. La La's. La La's. You scared me when first time you did it. <laughs> so you're going to jump? La La's. Ooh, if you're ever in the valley, go to La La's Mediterranean. But our Argentinian. Oh. Our stomach always hurts after that motor <laughs> We've gotten the it salad. multiple times. Yes. But it's so good. It's but then after so your, good. your stomach will turn a little. Just yeah. Adds up. yeah. What? It's up with that. <laughs> it can, It's consistent too. Yeah. I it's thought I was sure allergic like, for salads to a minute. <laughs> for a minute. To <laughs> I think it's because it, it's it's not a salad. It's like no rice and. It's like a warm uh, salad. Yeah. Chicken. It's like honey mustard. And like hella. You know what? The cheese is like. It's a lot of super cheese. Super processed. Yeah, the chicken's cubed out of a can for sure. Yeah. We hear our neighbor outside. Sorry, guys. It's super distracting. Do we have any updates? I don't know. Oh, yeah. The other night, our evening, um, our one of our janitors, they vacuum our hallways like probably like twice mm-hmm. a week. And he was just doing his Dougie. And she comes out like, stop, like telling, just giving There's him shit. There's glass everywhere. And yeah. he's like, well, then let me vacuum it up. Like he was <laughs> so like, get out of the way. Like I have to vacuum. Like it's to the point where our building is now just so like fed used up. to it. Fed up. Fed up, of course. But like, right. what are you going to do? Like, right. what do we even do? And uh, our our lobby has a like a revolving door mm-hmm. and uh, obviously like a normal door. And they're... On the winter times, in the winter times, they have us use the revolver so that it keeps the warm air in the lobby. And we have a doorman that either like spins the revolver, revolver, revolver. revolver for you or opens the door for you. And she like looks like 
he's like so waiting for her at the revolver and she looks at the normal door and like it's like a scary like she's just like has her head down like it doesn't move stares. her body stares at him and then looks at the door that she wants to go out which is like the normal door and then looks back at him like like open this door open for the me. door for me and he's like oh i'm sorry and like opens it and she just like stares at him and like slowly walks to the door and walks away it's just, it's just she's rude she's rude entitled it's awful has something there's something off yeah she her screaming has been really really bad angry like off the balcony and shit we're hearing glass break like every day at this point and honestly like it's scary more and more i don't like going outside the apartment and when i come oh. home i'm i'm through the door yeah and alex and i have this thing now we're like Hey, heads up, she's outside. Yes. If one of us is out or even like downstairs doing laundry, like yes. maybe hold off until she's back into her house. Oh, I hate it. Yeah. I think we'll be out of here in six months. Yeah, we want to go to Brooklyn. Yeah. we c- Yeah. Cute places. I've been keeping my eye out for Selena. I really, really want to go to Brooklyn. Yeah. And I think like we did two years in Manhattan. Like that's. It's a long time. It's a long time. We did it. And it's not going anywhere. Yeah. We'll I'm down back. for either Soho or Brooklyn. Soho is just so fucking expensive. We think this is expensive. Soho is even worse. Unless we can find like a little steel. Yeah. There's there's a lot of like, it will be an older building, but there's a lot of yeah. options that are, you know. Within budget. Yeah. We did just get really lucky with like a balcony vibe though. Because mm-hmm. I, I do need. Oh, for sure. For Link. Whether it's a balcony or like a. You know how like some units have like little side yard things? A yard a is a generous word. Um, a lot of the ones I was looking at in Soho have rooftops, like private rooftops. Okay. So like, you know, the ones that um, not like building rooftops, but just like it's like four stories up and yeah. it's like a they're usually the top level apartment. I don't even know what to call that. Just like a just like a patio a patio patio. a patio yeah not a balcony because it's not like a separate like off the building right it's just like an up door outside patio right right right, right. um a lot of the ones in soho have those yeah which are really cool once we start shopping i mean i can't wait i'm i'm not i'm more i'm more so wanting to love our place more than our area not saying i'm down to move to a bad area or anything but like I'm not going to stick just because I want to go to Brooklyn and I'm not going to be like, I, you know, like I'm, I, we have to find a place in Brooklyn. Like if we find a good place in Soho, then yeah, fuck yeah. I want to, oh, of course. Yeah. We even said that about this place. That's like why right. we got this place. We're in like a very boring area. It's just <laughs> like, it's not the popping area of no. Manhattan, but I like that. Yeah. I like that we're out of, we got what we wanted madness. out of it. Yeah. I think, I think that's a big thing to think about when moving no matter where you're at. Like, are you going to love your area or are you going to love your apartment? And if you can love both, you, you hit the jackpot for sure. Like, yeah, that's ideal, but it's more important to me to love my. Yeah. Especially with like the work that we do. We're in the house all the time, all the time, all the time. Yeah. Yeah, We really don't believe in. I want to live next to a station too, which that's easy to do. Yeah. But like we, we are very lucky to live next to a, a station where we don't have to walk far and we can get, anywhere that's a must have for sure it's so convenient my legs are hairy and need lotion next year (laughs) (laughs) i uh uh, i had therapy uh obviously last week or last monday and with the two holidays being the monday because i have therapy on mondays i'm not seeing her for er, until like january 8th or whatever and we're hanging up and she always you know finishes the call like really calmly and she always says be well that's oh, always how she signs off it's that. very sweet and I, I was like you too see you next year oh love and, that and, and she hung up oh she didn't say anything i, I think it was sh- i said it like right as she was already okay. hanging so up. she was just taking that as your far- farewell yeah but i was like oh. I, it's my favorite thing to do see see you next year i love the next year jokes like yep I haven't showered since last year, like right. New Year's Day. Right, um, you got to do it. It's the one day of the year you can. Right. Oh, it's so fun. It's so fun, and it's so true. Okay, before we get into today's general advice episode, we're going to take a quick break for our sponsor. 
Today's episode is sponsored by HelloFresh, which is a meal delivery service with pre-portioned ingredients delivered right to your doorstep. We all know this time of year, everyone's motivated to get healthy. So HelloFresh is a great option with their protein smart and calorie smart meal options. I love HelloFresh because I don't get bored of it either. Each week they have 45 different menu items and add-ons that you could choose from. And they're running this new thing where they are giving you breakfast for life. With each box, you're getting a free breakfast item just cause. As someone who's not as well versed in the kitchen, I love HelloFresh because they really lay everything out for you step by step and they even portion out everything that you need. So there's no waste. Those recipe cards are helpful too. And there's pictures. I love a good step by step picture. It makes it 10 times easier. <laughs> if you guys want to check out HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit, go to HelloFresh.com slash advice free and use code advice free for free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash advice free with code advice free. Thanks, Thanks HelloFresh. Hello I love that our general advice episode is falling on Christmas. I don't Me know why. too. It's, just, it's like we're giving you guys all a big warm hug on Christmas day. Right. Depending on what these say. Some of these might be pretty yeah. fucking intense. Maybe we'll be mean. But we want to give you a really big hug on this holiday. And if you don't know, every month now mm -hmm. we are doing uh, the last Monday of every month. We're doing a general advice episode where you guys just send in. We have so many. Oh my God. I know you guys send in entries to advice podcast at gmail.com and we're just going to go through no specific guideline no specific topic we just want to hear where you guys are at what i love though do up those subject lines yeah like we definitely especially when we get so many we'll be picky and choosy based on the subject subject line it just helps too and like honestly i feel like whether it's subconscious or not like say we're reading a topic about a certain relationship issue and then we see a subject line that might be able to like counteract or give the other perspective right. of that same issue we're gonna click it like exactly it just it it helps us it choose helps. so yeah. do it up yep i don't think we have to tell them that you guys have some crazy ass subject yeah lines, so. <laughs> you guys go in god you want to go first here's the first one my ex is 22 dating a 17 year old okay Hello, ladies. First, I just want to say thank you for all that you do. You truly help so many people, and I hope you never stop. Hopefully, this gets read on the podcast because I truly think it would make a good story for listeners. And if not, then hopefully you read it yourself and maybe get a good laugh. We'll see. So to start, a few months ago, my boyfriend and I of almost four years broke up. He gave me the classic, I'm just not wanting a relationship right now, and I need to work on myself. We've all heard that, right? So first, about three days after the breakup, I found out that he had sex with one girl. Truly shocked and hurt me, but we were broken. At, we were broken, so what can you do? Then I found out he is already talking to a completely separate girl, who, by the way, is 17. Assuming you read the subject line, my ex is currently 22. I myself am also 22. Him and I were still in contact about a month after we broke up and I confronted him about this new girl and he assured me that she was just being nice and they were just friends. Boy, was he wrong. Did I forget to mention this 17 year old is one of his good friends very recent ex dick move if you ask me about a month and a half after we broke up he told me we could no longer talk and when I asked if it was because of this new girl he did not correct me therefore I had my answer. I told him how extremely inappropriate it was for him to be with a 17 year old and he just completely ignored that part. I should also say that because of his actions after we broke up, I'm completely over him. But what but what I can't get over is that she's a literal child. He never would have striked me as that type of person. And now I guess I see I clearly dodged a bullet. Anyway, thanks for letting me rant about this. Sorry it was long. Love you both so much. And again, thank you for everything you do. Also, if you if you see this, I forgot to say you can use my name. It's Cameron. And yes, I'm a girl. LOL. I love the name I Cameron for a girl. When are people going to learn? Never. When are people, especially at that age, like it's one thing if you're in your 50s and you are out dating and you meet a guy who's in his 60s like i feel like once you're at that age you've yeah, already the age gap closes a little bit it closes and you're already fully developed as a human right. good point neither but, of them uh, have a frontal no, lobe <laughs> a 22 year old boy and a 17 year old girl like you 
Oh, it's disgusting. It speaks for itself. But homegirls over here, just out of a relationship too. It's the friend's ex. Like, right. they're fucking made for each other. Like, trash ass people. Oh. Like, if you're capable of that, you you run off a different type of gasoline, man. Like, you run off. I swear people like that run off the adrenaline that being sneaky gives them. Yes. It's fucking disgusting. Yes. It, I hate it. And there's something weird about like, even remember when we were in high school and it was, you even see it in movies. Oh, she's the, the teenager dating the college boy. Yeah. Like, why is that a, an acceptable narrative? I don't know. I, I don't know if that's one we could chop up to like, oh, it's just, it was how it was back then. But like. I don't, I don't know. It's, and it's, I don't know. I, I was watching She's the Man the other day, uh, the original one. And one of the main characters, the, the one who like breaks up with the high school boy leaves him for a guy who's like in his late twenties. And I'm sitting here th- like watching this movie. And it's like romanticized in the movie. I'm assuming. Yeah. And it's like, oh, she's the cool girl because she's dating the guy who's out of college. Yeah. Yep. Oh, I, like. I, I mean, I I was a freshman and I dated a senior for a long time. Two seniors. It's kind of gross. Yeah. But you're right. It was cool when I did it. It was cool. It was but, cool and like, but now looking at it, I'm like, we were. I always so felt so different. much younger. Yeah. I, I just got out of eighth grade, bro. Right. And you're, you're like freshman. looking at colleges. Yeah. What? Like, what did you guys do? You remember? Like, what did you guys talk about? Ah, uh, God. I mean, you know, my memory, he was really funny. Like I remember we had like very similar humor. We loved like working out. Like we were like, okay. Like athletic. Right. Were, like healthy. We loved like health shit. I don't know. It was a lot of just like play, like, like fun, okay. like, fun play. It wasn't, I mean, I was 14. Like right. it wasn't this like deep connection. Like it, I didn't have that until probably <laughs> Kelly, but like, but I also think it had a lot to do with the fact that like you were, I don't want to say like mature because you were literally 14, but like you were more experienced in the sense that like you went out by yourself and like you didn't have to ask your parents for permission to do things, you know, like you had a little more freedom at your age. Yeah. So like, I guess in his eyes, it was like an equal right person, if you will. Right. Equal sounds. Whereas me, I would literally have to be like, let me ask my mom. Right. Right. You know? Yeah. Like he, he was like coming over after school when like my parents weren't even home. I was going to his. Oh God. That would never, I would never, that would never. Like I'd go to his after school, change into my, um, my practice clothes and he would like drive me to cheer practice. Whoa. My mom loved it. She was was like, fuck yeah, I don't have to take you. (laughs) That was just so like the opposite of my experience. Like I always felt so much younger than even like the juniors. I felt like a the like junior. A, yeah. I just like remember like <laughs> feeling like, like, like a, that like, quote, the juniors. The like, juniors. I, you're referring to class 2012, I feel like. Like I remember calling them the juniors. Oh, when we were sophomores? Yes. I yeah, remember yeah. They, like I remember that's when it clicked that they were like the juniors. They were yeah. Yeah, you're right. You know what I mean? You're right. Like I remember like they were at the junior on the quad. And the, the seniors, seniors were always like um Like Taylor Valdez. Taylor I was yes. just gonna say that Taylor Valdez and like Logan Montavo. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> like they were the seniors yeah. but like i oh i always felt like oh my god you're so much older than me yeah. i felt like a kid around them yeah you know yeah i get that i mean i was just also very sheltered i was gonna say like we just i get that from your perspective i do but right. like i also like you went out and I, shit i like i like went out with it like, yeah I, like, yeah yeah it was it was just that's what makes the dating weird at that time though like yeah. you nailed that like it's it's because the freedom and like I mean, it's so many things, but it, per our conversation, the freedom and like where you're at mentally, like yeah. you, you, like you, you had to ask your parents to right. hang out. Whereas like this person is almost 18 and like driving, driving and can go buy cigarettes and shit. Like, right. It's just, it's, you're at different parts of your life. I don't know. Yeah. It's just crazy. It's, it's crazy. crazy how it's crazy. I put in quotes, normal it was. I also, I was, uh, 19 dating someone who could legally drink and i remember thinking like wow like you can go to a bar right like if they're having a night out like you can't come yeah <laughs> sorry that's that's just crazy to think it's about. crazy yeah 
Yeah, think of like thinking of the 17 year old and the 22 year old. Like, you want to go get a beer with your friends, your 17 year old girlfriend, she has, she's at school night. Like, she, she, she literally has exams tomorrow. Yeah. Crazy. Or like buying alcohol for your younger lover. Huh? Yeah. Like, don't worry for this party on Friday after the game. Like, my boyfriend can buy us beer. Why is your boyfriend going to a high school game if he can right. buy beer? <laughs> right. Unless he's like the coach's son and like, even worse. <laughs> right, right. But like at least he's a fucking reason to be there. Right. But like if you're like fully graduated, like don't be scram. going to high school football games. Get out of there. Go live your life. <laughs> okay, next one. The subject line just really perked up my ears. Fell in love with a liar. Oh no. I already know. I'm just I'm just gonna put it out there, guys. Some shit went down yesterday. So I might be a little more ruthless. With this liar You're passionate shit. about this. I'm passionate right about now. the subject right now. <laughs> I'm pissed. Okay, here it is. I've been really going through it and I'm so confused and still I'm not sure I'm going to word this very well. I'm a female, 29, and I was in a, rela- a three-year relationship with another girl, 24. I had just moved to Utah three years ago and one of my coworkers said I should go out with her one night, so I did. That night, I met the girl I spent the next three years with. It was nothing at first and after a while, it started becoming flirty She was hooking up with some guy consistently at the time, but he didn't want a relationship with her. One night we were all hanging out at my coworker's house and they, they talked upstairs for a while. And I guess he cut her off and ended up leaving. When she came downstairs, she asked me to cuddle with her on the couch from where we started, from where we started having a thing. I was pretty traumatized from my last relationship, so I didn't feel necessarily ready for a new one, but it had been two years and I was trying to put myself out there. As time went on, I started growing a lot of feelings for her. One weekend, my friend from home came to visit, and when we were out one night, she looked over to the girl I was seeing I was seeing's phone and saw that she was messaging the same guy she was hooking up with saying, "Just give me a chance, baby. All I want is you." Damn it. I confronted her about this, and she blocked him on everything and said it was stupid and she didn't mean any of it. A couple months later, we end up dating, and this became a cycle of lies, but she constantly manipulated me into feeling like I was crazy for not believing them, and for the longest time, I felt like I just had trust issues, and I was ruining our relationship. Examples. She told me she was coming over after my nap, after work, and when I woke up, she was in a different state Oh, and ended up sleeping at her ex's house that night. Okay. She got drunk one night and started flirting with my friend's husband. She told me one night after drinking that she didn't love me and she was only with me to kill time till she found someone better. I'm my stomach just turned and then cuddled up next to me later that night and asked me why I was crying and said, she's sorry. She's broken up with me every month for the last year and has disappeared for the weekends. Then comes back apologizing, saying she loves me. Dude, what the fuck? Those are just very few examples and i know i seem crazy for staying but if you were there for all the conversations and her manipulating and gaslighting me and convincing me that i was crazy you would understand we got to the point in our relationship where we've been the best we've been the entire time we've dated we got new jobs and we're talking about getting a place together in in a few months and checking options for babies to see if my insurance would help cover it then one day she got super weird and said she was sleeping at her uncle's house and I had just the worst feeling in my gut. I had a friend who had her location on and it definitely wasn't at her uncle's. I sent her a screenshot. She tried to tell me I was crazy and that she was at his house and she was going to bed. I tried FaceTiming her a few times and she wouldn't answer. She said at this point she shouldn't have anything to prove to me and I needed to trust her. And that's the problem with our relationship that I accuse her of things. The next day I went to work and she was texting like nothing happened. I had the worst anxiety. So on my lunch, I went to that address just for my own sanity because I started believing her, even though her location said otherwise. Sure enough, her car was there. I told her I saw her car and I just went off on her because I was so mad and she couldn't gaslight me and lie to me like that. She told me I was psycho. Jesus. After I went back to work and waited a while, I told her I felt like I at least deserved a talk. She completely ghosted me. All of her stuff is at my house. She lived with me at my dad's and still nothing. It's like she'd rather avoid me than have any of her stuff. Like I'm the one who didn't do who did anything. And I'm just so confused. I went on Facebook and saw her and the guy she hooked up with there talking again through a post. I just feel fucking blindsided and hurt. 
I don't know what to do with myself half the time. My anxiety has been so bad. I've been missing work and I don't want to lose that job. I feel like I'm just giving up. I feel like a fucking idiot and pushing through my days has been hard. Love you guys and appreciate your insight on everything. Well, I definitely feel like it was meant to be that I pulled this. Yeah. Fucking entry. I, I believe you. I, you know, we're not going to sit here and shit on you because you're right. When it comes to that level of manipulation and gaslighting, it is the hardest thing to not believe. Right. That's why it's such a toxic cycle that millions of people deal with every day in so many different types of relationships. And I'm so sorry you're dealing with this, but just know, and this is going to take practice. It's going to be a whole lot of fake it till you make it sadly, because you have to break these like mental cycles now, but you have to see this for what it is. She you can't change. To, she will not change. This is a classic avoidant attachment style. She is oh, really good for a few months. And then boom, back to where it was because in her eyes, she's like, okay, now, now I'm ready. Now, like I had to fuck up a little bit, but now I'm good. And then the second she feels it coming to honestly, what a normal brain would see as like good and healthy. She runs away because that's her being afraid of good. healthy relationships. Cause she doesn't yeah. in her, in her head, it's not called healthy in her head. It's that's all she wants to avoid is that healthy part of a relationship regardless she's not gonna fucking change I know that's blunt but that's how you got to deal with this your brain right now and I I feel you and I hear you and I'm I'm doing the same dance your brain right now is trained like your your thought process right now is trained that she is like the almighty and like won't fucking lie to you because she you love her so much and all that that's also not love you shouldn't have to convince yourself or like even lie to yourself, like the location thing. You had to take time out of your own day to go drive to that place. And now you're feeling like you're missing work and all these things. Like that's not love. Love won't drain you like that. Mm -mm. that love or not, that's not a human you want in your life, dude. Like and you she, shouldn't have to like prove. Yeah. You shouldn't have to like prove yourself wrong and then prove her no. wrong for like it shouldn't be tested. No. Nothing should need to be double checked when it comes to location or, right. uh, you know, checking the Facebook posts and all that. And like, then the cycle of her having to like call you crazy and then you're. Yeah, dude. You're gaslighting yourself. You're like, fuck, maybe I am taking this too far. Like, no, take it for what it is. Like Kristen no. said, she is actually at someone else's house. She Literally. has like, you can't deny the no. facts but I get why your brain wants to, because of course it fucking hurts to know the facts. Of course it's like going against all emotions that you've, you've felt these past, you said it was like three years, but it, it, it's going to be hard. But I, like for the sake of your sanity and the longevity of your love life and your self love, you have to break the cycle and it's going to start with no contact. Yeah. And if that means you need to, you know, politely box up her stuff and bring it to whoever, you know, can receive it to where you don't need to be the person to pass it off. Call that step one. Step two is, I don't even know if I'm going to call it step two, but like you're going to want that last talk because your heart is going to yearn for some type of answer. That's your heart and your brain, like that's what it's made for. You're, you're gonna, you're gonna yearn for a, a why, you know, which is super valid, but there's nothing she can say mm -mm. that will validate any of this. Like, please go into that knowing that this is going to be something where you have to just, oh, I feel like we talk about this with a lot of entries from you guys. You have to see it for what it is, and that's your closure. Mm -hmm. The the actions of repeated times, the the one where you said she went to a fucking other state, right? And like ghost, like that alone, that one time occurrence alone, run. She's not respecting your time. She's not respecting, you know, the fact that you said you were gonna hang out after you woke up from your nap after work, like. She doesn't respect you. And that's the bare minimum for human connection, whether it's a friend or a coworker. And that's like, and you guys are lovers. Like I'll put lovers in quotes. It's, it's just, 
you have to see this for what it is and it's going to be so hard but like you have to just break that cycle of believing that she is going to change has it in her has like control over you like uh, I don't it's it's hard and I, I just get so worked up about it but this is a self journey, man. Getting out of these type of manipulative relationships is a beast, but there's just no during your, I'm going to call it a detox during your detox from her. All you're going to want is her. It's like a fucking drug. All you're going to want is her, but I'm telling you, she's not going to help you through this. It feels like it. Cause she's like the only one who knows who, who knows what's going on in the right? situation as well. Right. So you would like, you would hope and you would assume that they're hurting just as much as you right. are. But oh. like, this is part of her cycle. Know that she, she's aware of this situation. Like even the fact that a couple months into you guys dating, she reached out to her, her ex and was begging for her it's back. A fu- yes. Like she just, she, now she's probably going to try and reach out to you the second that she finds a new person too. Yep. Yeah, this is, this is the, the, the take and give of her dynamic. Like, this, this is an what her lover. yeah this is what her cycle is supposed to do mm-hmm. but you don't want any part of that you don't want to be part of her cycle you can't be no for your sake for your mental health for you, you gotta make it black and white you cannot be a part of it no because it, it's because it's not your cycle that's not the way you love no. that's not the relationship that you want and like you made that clear to us in this entry an email right i can only imagine the love in your heart that is like deep down knows this is really fucking not compatible to say the least right this is poison this is not how you love so don't give in to her cycle oh god it makes me sick the 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 detox part where you think like they're the one that you need to be talking to about it and i i said this to tanner during like the few days that we were talking after the breakup, I was like, there's a weird, and I admitted it. I was like, there's a weird part of me that like, obviously because the last fucking years you've been the person that that I go to to for things, right? Like a stressful day or like whatever it is, like family shit. Like that's your person that you. It's your support. Yeah, your support system. There you go. But then it's insanity to think that the thing that poisoned you is also going to be your right. antidote. Like it's, it's just, it's just not how it works. Like when they're the one that wronged you, they can't, they can't be the one to help you. It's the two cannot exist together. No. It, and it's, it feels simple, but I know it's hard to but wrap that's your head like, around. That's exactly what keeps them in the cycle. Yep. Like they do something wrong, but then you go back to them because they're your support system and they love bomb you. So you think, oh, like you're here for me. You understand what you did to me. You understand how you wronged me and my feelings towards this. But they're not going to be, they're going to go back on their, like they're going to fall back into the cycle. Mm-hmm. The love bombing. Yeah. That's just know that when the love bombing starts, it's not because everything's good all of a sudden. It's, it's because just it the, just started over. Yeah. You literally just rewinded the whole movie and pressed play again. Yep. And you know it. You know it deep down. Go like, Go with your gut on this. I know you feel very broken and, and anxious. You're talking about how you're very anxious right now. That's, I, you that's your body clouded. rejecting her. I was going to say, <laughs> but I think that's a pretty clear fucking sign that you need to go with your gut here. Yeah. Your, your lover shouldn't make you that anxious either. But I get it. I was really fucking anxious. I didn't know why. I thought it was my gut. I thought it was maybe because I wasn't supposed to be in New York. I was, you were I making was, doctor's appointments. I was reevaluating my life. And then the second he gets out of it, you haven't had. Like, I have not had anxiety, anxiety. bro. <laughs> like, that's crazy. I have not. You've not. You're not anxious about. Besides last night, right? Because every time I spoke to him yesterday, yeah. And it's crazy. Like the second I spoke to him yesterday, I'm not going to get into it, guys. I'll maybe in a later date, but not right now. Um, the second. Like I answered the phone, I got that like head Head, buzz thing that I was so concerned that it was a brain tumor. I I was making doctor's appointments. I thought, I thought there was something wrong with my head. Even our zoom calls, I was telling people like, guys, I think I'm dying. Like this is our final zoom. And I only get it now when I think about him, my brain does like the, like, it's like a, it's like a phone vibration. It's like a zap. Yeah. And like, I don't know. 
He's sucking your energy. That's what it is. He is sucking your energy. Completely. Because it's all he knows how to do because that's his fucking cycle. He just feeds himself. And like you're. Regardless of how it affects people. So intuitive with your body that you physically, it manifests physically for you. Like it, it does different things for different people, I think. And like, that's what, that's how it affected you. It was, you felt him sucking your energy out of your body. Yep. And that's why you were physically weak. That's why you couldn't sleep. That's why you had fucking brain zaps and (laughs) anxiety that kept you fucking bedridden for days. Days. Like he was sucking your energy. Oh my God. Like it's like in Sims when they're, they're like super hungry. That bar goes low. Yes. Like my bar. And they start walking slower. Yes. And they're like, I was like, that was your brain. Yeah. That's, that's how I was talking in that language. I had to learn a new language. (laughs) The way that we use humor to cope with everything. <laughs> you should do that too. That's yeah, the best way to do it. It really is. I always say. It's just through. Whenever I like make a joke in therapy. And she'll just like, she'll giggle with me. She's not going to just like straight face me. Right. I'll always be like, hey, I got to cope somehow. And at least it's not black tar heroin. Right. And she's like, okay, so next thing. <laughs> <laughs> but like, thank God. Right. We all have our things. We all have our vices. I think a little if joke here and there is it, That's fine. the, Yeah. <laughs> if you're not breathing. hurting anyone get out of it while you can get, you just know run. like just ugh. it's that simple and i even you listening to this you might be like no it's not but this nope and you will I feel lived it. so you will feel the relief i promise you you will so, feel so free and yourself again run. and you'll be able to breathe it like ugh, get out of it you have to and you got to look at it as it's your only option because otherwise you live like this. And if you're okay living anxious and living with an inconsistent lover, by all means. But you're not. Yeah. Because if you were, you wouldn't, you you wouldn't, have, written you wouldn't have written in. You wouldn't be having crippling anxiety. You wouldn't be second guessing yourself. You just, you wouldn't. So honor that. Okay, here's the next one. Is my <laughs> boyfriend's sister in love with him? Yeah, it's switched up a little bit. <laughs> hey, hey, big fan of the podcast. Love you both. Hey. So my boyfriend's sister, great intro, by the way. Hey, hey. Love that. To the point. So my boyfriend's sister is 29 years old. My boy, my boyfriend and I, if, oh, female, she, her, are 25. Since we first met a little under a year ago, she has been trying to break us up every sneaky way she can. Oh. For context, I'm an American who lives in Cambridge, England, and they are both born and raised British folks. I never know if it's a cultural thing or just a their family thing. But since the day my boyfriend and I met, his sister and mom have been convinced that I would, quote, steal him away to America and they would lose their precious baby boy. Even that. Yeah, I I have a lot to say. Precious baby boy. I have a lot to say. His mom has come around since spending time to get to know me and we get along great now. But his sister has stayed strong in, in the hate train. Now, all of this being said, I have tried to just kill his sister's worries and break up inspiration inspiration attempts with kindness. I go out of my way to invite her to everything and to spend time and do things for her when we're all together. She always turns down my invitations. Not that I'm complaining about that, LMAO. And is very rude to me and tries to separate my boyfriend and I when we're all together. I'm talking, asking him to move seats away from me so they can... Oh my God, quote, snuggle and always starting conversations revolving people they know and I don't. So I can't participate. Snuggling your, your sibling is mm. after age, like 13. I was going to say like 10. I'll go. We'll go 13. That's fine. It's it's Christmas. We'll say 13, but they're snuggling in your late twenties. I know that these things can happen, but she's very persistent with her attempts to make me feel unwelcome. I don't come from a touchy family, so I've always been a bit weirded out and at how affectionate she is to him. And when she came to my birthday party, the one thing she did attend, my friends all thought she was some random girl trying to fuck my boyfriend. So I've been super weary of her intentions ever since. Super (laughs) weary. The cherry on top of the shit show was when we all went to dinner for my boyfriend's dad and I casually mentioned the pre-Christmas trip my boyfriend and I had planned to visit my family. I get to see them twice a year because of my school schedule. 
His sister threw an adult temper tantrum, ruined the entire dinner. We all sat in silence for the remainder, Ew. and we had just gotten our appetizers. And my boyfriend and I moved the trip to after Christmas. Oh, my God. I know it's bad that we do so much to pacify and appease her, but she's so dramatic and rude that it's just easier to avoid the issues by doing things her way. What can I do that isn't just complaining to my boyfriend? Because that clearly isn't helping anything. And avoiding her doesn't work because we spend most weekends with his family because he still lives at home. I'd appreciate any wise words and suggestions. I'm desperate. Thank you. I have no idea what what you could do. In I this. Yeah. Well, I was going to say the biggest thing here is his perception of this and yeah. like his opinion and that how he been, acts in these situations, because right. if he enables it, there's quite literally nothing, there's nothing that you, you can, can do. do. And it is just their dynamic, unfortunately. And some people are just born into these situations and they are raised to have these like weird dependent dynamics between and it's always like mother son sister brother dynamics yeah it's one thing to be close but you're right you nailed it with the dependency like when when it also like this would this is probably how they'd be with any girl yeah so that's what i'm saying in some it's not you don't take it personal no they they will do this with any woman in his life if there was a woman before you they probably did the same thing to her yeah and yeah i feel like there, there's he's saying this i feel like there's not much you could do because he is in the situation he would be your only um you know thing that can stick up for your side of it but right. he's not even seeing the wrong with it right i, I want to know. know like in the like the the dinner where she threw like literally a tantrum, the fact that you guys were going on a trip together. What is his reaction? Like, is he sitting there like, yo, like, don't be weird. I'm going on a trip with my girlfriend. Or is he like, I'm sorry. Like, yeah, we'll move it to after Christmas. He's probably like, I know, I know. Like, does he say, yeah, sorry. My sister says some like weird shit or any glimpse of hope with him. Uh, Like if there's not, there's you gotta chalk it up too if yeah if there's not you i mean choose your battles if you can handle it because your love is your love and by all means seriously like there there are successful relationships out there where one person doesn't like the other's family and it's successful and you there's boundaries with it and that's fine yeah you don't need to be bestie bestie with them but But if if it's like taking a toll on you i i dated a mama's boy and we used to fight about it because I thought it was fucking I weird. I I just the whole dynamic. I was like, you, like it's you don't just love your mom. Like you, like you would suck her tit if you still could. Yeah. <laughs> if she could still produce mo- milk, you would you'd run it up. You'd run up a tab. Yeah, it's just there's uh, there's weird dynamics out there, and unfortunately, it, even if you find it odd, you can't. You can't get in between it. It's something that they got to work out themselves and it has nothing to do with you. But if it affects you and it takes a toll on the relationship itself, then you got to take it for what it is. If you can accept it under, you have to understand that it's not going to change. Yeah. And these dynamics are so deeply woven into the family. Exactly. It is. It's like every man, man at this point, like, uh, it's so deeply woven into the dynamic of the family that no matter how nice you are, no matter how perfect picture, perfect of a girlfriend you're trying to be, you're not going to break the dynamic between him and his sister and him and his mom. Like at the end of the day, you are something that's taking away his attention. Yep. doesn't matter who you are, what you, you could look be a like dog. You could be, a, yeah, you could be any job, like yep. anything in his personal life. That's taking away from, they'll always be mama. like, Oh, but what about us? Yep. Girls go do your own thing. Yeah. Go get a boyfriend for real. No, she wants her brother. It's weird. And I feel like, does he still call his mom, mommy? If there's a why at the end of addressing <laughs> either parent past age, I'll say seventeen. What, uh, <laughs> Alex? I'm getting. I'm no. being generous. No. I'm, I'm being generous. Fifteen, fucking ten, bro. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Trust me, I I my don't even ten- think I ever said mommy or daddy. No, me either. But my ten year old 
nephew says mom okay yeah like no yeah you're right once you lose that little baby voice that like naturally children have obviously let drop the y drop the, drop the y at ing <laughs> dudding <laughs> isn't that like a grammar rule drop the y at ing i don't know in what con i don't know i don't know there's some like drop something at ing whatever next Who episode knows we'll, yeah we'll do grammar app love that love that but yeah it's like i'm sorry you just can't you won't you will never be perfect enough for them no but that's not you no. you're a great person yeah i'm just i could tell saying, like you have like, a good head on battles. your shoulders because you see the weirdness snuggling with your 29 year old like that's i have a weird. brother he's in his early 30s i'm in my late 20s i would never be like vince come snug snuggle yeah I don't even know if I'd snuggle my sister unless like I just, someone died. I, yeah. I don't, I just don't understand. Um, I don't know sister dynamics cause I don't have one. Right. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. My, don't, unless uh, my mom unless and my aunt died. would never, I don't think snuggle. Yeah. But they're like, yeah, I don't know any sisters that would maybe Tara and Brie. Fuck no. I, don't no. Think. <laughs> I think maybe Leanna and Gina. Probably oh yeah but, would, but leanna's very say, like they're physical they're they're very affectionate so i guess that depends but, but they're sisters right <laughs> they're right. sisters and like they can have relationships and the other one doesn't get fucking weird about it right leanna would never snuggle her brother no absolutely not and she's affectionate yeah there's a right and wrong in this situation i'm gonna say <laughs> <laughs> and i think it's clear <laughs> Ooh, this next subject line says walking down the aisle with my situationship oh Good. I hope you're not the one getting married. Oh, hi, Kristen and Alex. I'm going to apologize in advance for how long this might be. Lots of details I think are important. So I met my ex, we'll call him Joey, in the summer of 2020 through mutual friends. At the time, I had a boyfriend and he had a girlfriend. We both went through breakups in the fall. Then in March of 2021, my best friend, we'll call her Rachel. Are we doing the friends cast? Yeah. <laughs> Invited me to visit for her birthday. She lived in a different state than me at the time. Joey was Rachel's boyfriend. Boyfriend's brother. Joey was, was Rachel's, Rachel's boyfriend's, boyfriend's brother. brother. Okay. 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 So he was there and now and now single as well. We talked all night so easily as friends. I wasn't looking for anything because I wanted to take time to be single. After the weekend was over, Joey and I would text every day, talk on the phone at least once a week, and ended up getting super close. That lasted all summer. Then Rachel invited me to visit for Halloween. I went and Joey was there. And that night we saw each other for the first time since March. We had such a great night that ended with the most perfect kiss and more. <laughs> From then on, we would still talk every day and I would see him when I would visit. Neither of us wanted to do distance. It was a situation ship for sure. He ended up telling me he was in love with me and he wished I didn't live so far away. I felt the same way. Fast forward to spring of 22, I was applying for new jobs and the most perfect job opportunity presented itself in the city he lived in. I thought since I had a, a, since I had friends there already, it would be the perfect place to move. Disclaimer, I did not, ex did not accept the job or look in the area because of him. I actually loved the city and dreamed of this job for such a long time. He was just a bonus. I told him I was moving and he seemed excited. I moved that May and everything was perfect for the first few weeks. He stayed over the first night I got there and didn't leave except for work. And then things started to get weird. Mm. I was ready to start something with him and he seemed like, seemed like things, he seemed to like things the way they were, having a girlfriend without the title. Things stayed that way throughout the summer. Then in October, a year and a half of talking every single day, seeing each other a lot, saying I love you, etc. Whoa. I finally told him I couldn't wait for him anymore. And if he wanted to be with me, he needed to fully commit. He said he was sorry and couldn't give me what I wanted, even though he was giving me everything besides the title. We went no contact. It was the worst heartbreak I've ever been through. Here's where things get worse. Rachel is getting married to Joey's brother. I'm the maid of honor and he's the best man. Uh oh. It has been over a year since things ended. And even though I'm in such a better place now than I was, I'm still hurt and unable to move on from him. And knowing we have to walk down the aisle together in a few months does not make this any easier. Here's where I need the most advice. Joey has been drunk calling me, <gasps> apologizing, crying, asking me to forgive him. 
telling me I'm his comfort person and how the past year of not talking to him has been so difficult. Any apology you can think of, he has said it. I know he isn't ready for what I'm ready for. I know he still has a lot of growing up to do. I know he has a lot of himself to figure out. I still have so much love for him and I want nothing but the best for him. How do I keep the progress I've made and stay strong after hearing him say all of these things to me, knowing I have to walk down the aisle with him in a few months, knowing we'll, we'll both most likely be single at the wedding and overall get over him. Again, I'm, I'm sorry if this was long and confusing. I felt the timeline was necessary. Let me know if you need anything clarified. LOL. Love you guys. Please keep, please keep a non PS. Hi link. Oh, hi mom. Sent from my phone. This is kind of one of those scenarios where I feel like you just need to fake it until you make it, especially being around him physically. Like you have to just in your head repeat, you know, he's not going to give you what he wants. I had like, I need to keep my distance. I need to, I, I would almost like if I were you, I would go into this situation like fully focused on the job that you need to do walking down the aisle I would like cut myself off from flirting I feel like any chance you get to like fall back into a cycle with him will draw you especially since he's obviously like in the mindset to try and like win you back it'll like draw you guys closer to each other but I feel like you just need to keep your distance when you guys are physically in the same room otherwise you're just gonna like in your head, convince yourself like, oh, maybe this will work. We're flirting. We're doing really well that like, we're going to fall back into the, okay, call me tomorrow. Like, I don't know. I wouldn't even give myself the opportunity to, I like, I would hold on to my progress so tightly that I don't want to give myself the opportunity to fall back into the cycle. So I would just beeline down that fucking aisle and part ways and just like have your own night and your own experience at this wedding because you also don't want to like I don't know like ruin the experience of seeing your best friend get married because you're so fogged up with the thought of like possibly getting back together with him does that make sense yeah I I'm curious what I'm in I'm sure this is a loaded answer that I would can't assume anything, but um, what are you still hung up on? That, right, that, sound, that sounds kind of insensitive, but you know, you you're mentioning all this like really amazing growth and like you you know he's not for you and this that and the other thing. It's probably just like the comfort of having someone in a new city and. But I think it's been like a year. Yeah, I, and I'm not I'm not saying like healing a year you should be over him. Like I'm not I'm not saying that, but I guess more so like challenge yourself ask yourself like dig a little deeper in yourself about what about the connection you're still yearning for because that could be a kind of a x marks a spot for a part of your healing that you need to lean into by yourself like if you're like you're saying like new city like um it just because like it's somebody she knows there whatever totally valid but maybe you need to like learn how to be more independent then because you're leaning on this vulnerable part of you. That's like, right. Well, I need somebody. You don't need anybody. Right. Again, that's just an example. That's why I ask like, what about, what about the connection are you you still hung up? Right. What are you still drawn to? You know? Cause I'm not saying like you guys don't have a connection. Like, trust me, I, I get it. But at the end of the day, like you don't need anybody. Like, right. And I, I fully believe that. I think we all have several soulmates on this planet, but I don't think we need any of them. I think people can also live. And I'm not saying you need to stay single forever either, but um, I think I think people get clouded post breakup thinking like I can't exist without this human. Right. When you can. Yeah, you can. Everybody can. It, it takes work, but that's why like challenge yourself and trying to figure out what that is. Um. But, but as for the wedding, I mean, I'm sure that's coming up sooner than any of this like digging can really right do. And I think Alex nailed it. Just do the thing. Walk down the aisle. He's probably gonna. I don't know if you guys drink and if there's gonna be alcohol involved. He's probably gonna like wanna pull you aside and talk. And yeah, I, I mean, he said she said he's been drunk calling her. Oh right, so right, he's right. Gonna, like I think you can very 
like respectfully and quickly <laughs> just be like, Hey, today is about Rachel. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do this right now. It's it, good to see you and walk away. It, it also sounds like you might be something that's kind of pulling you in was the fact that, I mean, you said he's giving you everything besides the title. And I think the only like natural thing and like I would go there too is the question of why isn't he willing to give you the title if he's playing the role of boyfriend already. Yeah. And like that's, I don't want you to feel bad for questioning that or God, even no. wanting that answer but he's not going to give you that answer, especially no. at this wedding. Like you moved and then this happened. Like he right. liked that there was, he can have his independence, but he still had somebody when he wanted to be, yep. you know, vulnerable that he can lean into. He had the best of both worlds when you guys were a distanced situation ship. Yep. Like, so he wasn't giving you everything that you wanted no. besides the title. Like he's not giving you the commitment that you deserve. The respect. But I also like, I see that you want that answer and you want, I, I get it. Like you just want to yeah. shake him and be like, we're already doing it's not it. That like, hard. Why won't you just commit? And like, why won't you just call me your girlfriend? But you're not going to get that answer out of him at this wedding. And you probably will never get that answer out of him because it just is what it is with these type of people who don't want to commit. You should never have to like ask for a commitment like no. that. Unless like you're proposing cause you're already nope. committed to each other. You know, you, and you also shouldn't have to like, you shouldn't have to, you shouldn't have to question it no. if, to, to anyone out there dating in the dating world. If you're questioning their intentions or what they want or where they see something going, you already have the answer. Yeah. You shouldn't have to question it. They should like people should be upfront with their intentions. It's really sad. I'm really sorry that you're going through this and you even have to be put in this situation of like, Oh, even the fact that you have to be like on his arm walking down the aisle. Like I wish you could just walk with, like, I get it. The, the maid of honor always walks down with the, right. the best man, but like, Oh, it's, I wish she could like switch up the roto or it's something. It's a quick walk. Just yeah, like quick. And Speed honestly walk. in that moment, I think, you know, I, I hope you're, you're going to be more like, wow, like your best friend's getting married. Like you're going to be more focused on like the wedding. Mm -hmm. So just like get down there, split, and then you don't have to, you don't have to do anything after that. Like nope. stand your ground. Don't dance with them. Try not to flirt. Like even oh. if, if you have, I wouldn't necessarily put this on the bride cause she's already has so much going on that day. But if you have like another homie there, just be like, Hey, pull me away. If I get stuck in like, yes. if he's trying to like, I need to talk to you and he's like hammered. Right. Or do you have a plus one? Like, Bring a date. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. That'd be an easy repellent right there. Bring a date. Yeah. I'm sorry. Let us know how it goes. Keep us updated. Okay. Next one. Short and sweet. I like it. Mama, I'm in love with a criminal. Hey girlies. I've watched y'all since the beginning and it's really crazy how I feel like you are my friends and we've never met. LOL. I just wanted to say that I love y'all. Let's get started. Please keep anonymous. I met this guy on Hinge, and within a few days, I genuinely have thought this is my soulmate. He is perfect. He's got that shmoney. <laughs> He's so freaking sweet. Great at texting and conversation. Very cute. Tall. Has similar morals that I share and owns a few businesses. Like, what could be better? We've been texting. I deleted Hinge because I thought I found the one for about two weeks now. But I am already being crazy. I watch too many true crime shows to go on a date with a stranger without looking up their criminal record. I don't know if that's insane or extremely vigilant on my part. Plus, it's all public record. Anyway, I found out that he's been arrested multiple times. He said he's been sober for a while now, but I feel a little scared to meet him in person now for a date. One of the arrests had to deal with physical violence, which I'm completely mm. against. I grew up in an abusive home as a child and it just scares me. What do I do? I'm getting to know him via text and he seems so amazing. But what if it's not the same in real life? Do I go on the date? What if I get murdered? LOL JK or what if? Okay. I, someone who, and like, yes, people can change. Like he's sober. Who knows? It could have just been something he does when he's drunk. Like, all the things I'm, I'm just going to throw a big preface here. I, I understand the outcomes here, but I'm going to generalize something real quick that I, I really think a lot of people need to hear. You grew up in an environment that 
uh, you said there was abuse in your household. And I'm, I'm very sorry about that. It's not fucking easy. Whether or not he um, will ever do it again, right? There's more to an abuser, like in their like personality than just physically putting hands on someone. Mm -hmm. And that being said, I'm not saying this is like guaranteed, but don't be shy to the fact that there might be other th other subconscious things about his personality that are going to trigger the fuck out of you. You and know? It, absolutely. And it's just very, like, I know you're like, honeymoon phase hard eyes towards him right now but it's so easy to paint a very pretty picture over text yeah. in the amount of two weeks yeah and you guys haven't even you've you haven't been physically around his energy yet you no. haven't had a per, you haven't like, looked in his eyes you haven't looked in his eyes you haven't had a one-on-one -on -one conversation like face to face there's so many factors here that could like flip your switch That'll get like you already have the inkling. You looked yeah, him up, dude. You have his record. Like also when when things like uh, connections feel like perfect, that perfect that quick. Ninety nine point nine percent of the time, unless you're in a fucking Pixar fairy tale, he's it's bad. Yeah, he's making you feel that. And like, you, there's so many factors to it, but like connections that are that passionate that quick are be usually because there's a trigger there and you're finding comfort because he reminds you of someone of your past. Right. Which is not always a good thing. No. And you guys like the not being around his energy part is so important. Like, yeah, that's like, you don't basics. know. Oh, he could be typing word for word, a fucking script that he saw like in a Disney movie, like to yeah. Kristen's point. Yeah. But you don't know his intention behind these words yet. Like, and you yeah. only get, get and understand intention when you are physically around someone's energy at least for me like i get my read off of people 100 percent based on how we interact in person yep and you're not and like i don't think you should go on a date i don't like i don't i don't think you should even open the can of worms because if he if the if i hate to put a title on it but per the conversation if the abuser in him triggers something in you and it sucks you in mm, it's gonna be it's even just, harder to get out hard. of especially if you grew up around it dude like be conscious of your triggers be conscious of things in people that you don't want to be around you know and <sighs> if you can catch it this early you're two weeks in yeah there's for you to already feel that over text like i get it we've all been there like yeah. where it's like oh my god like and you I get like really excited. I felt that with my current boyfriend, but I also got his read in exactly. person. Exactly. Like, right. Like, the, 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 and there's a line. Like, you can have yeah. excitement, but for you to be like, he's a hinge, I think this is the one. You weren't like that with him. No. It wasn't like that. No. You could be excited about a new connection, but like, slow down. There's a reason it's like they, they say things that like uh, fl a big flame from the beginning burns out double as quick like yep. let it be a slow burn if it's something real but i don't i don't i don't like this i don't i don't have a good feeling about I don't it i have a good feeling about it and also no i don't think you're crazy to look up shit i think that's just the modern yeah. dating smart you got to protect yourself i fucking get it especially if there's no um uh if you don't have a mutual friend it's right, smart where you can, like, to, ask questions yeah that's you don't point. know anything about this guy you know nothing you don't know anything about him that's Ugh. it'd be different if his his record was like didn't pay a parking ticket like fuck right. yeah eat the rich don't pay it but like arrested for physical violence that's a big arrest yeah that's a big to to get the cops involved too and like, does he know you know like have you brought it up what does not. he say about it probably not yeah i would i would i guaranteed freak out like he'd be like whoa why are you looking me up like right okay next one the subject line is to flirt or not to flirt, <laughs> please help a guy out. Ooh, love this. Hi, guys. I'm a longtime listener and writing in for the first time. <gasps> look, Hi. Looking for some advice. Yeah, this got long. Sorry. Mm. Here's some context. About six months ago, I got out of a serious relationship with the love of my life. Yeah, it's been brutal, but I've been doing better lately. Without many details, we still believe we will be together one day in the long run, but currently in no contact right person wrong time situation and no other parties were involved we parted amicably and she moved out 
when we broke up, she told me if I found someone I wanted to be with, she didn't want to hold me back from that. Mm. Now, of course, in the moment, I never thought I would even look at another person in that way. But if I'm being honest, I think I want to flirt with my coworker. Mm. Let's call her Amanda. I'm hesitant to say Amanda is a flirty person because I don't want to categorize women like that. But I do get the feeling that she flirts with me sometimes. Sometimes it's comments about my appearance or my physical abilities. My job requires a lot of heavy lifting. Or we've even made some sexual jokes. I've always considered this playful banter because we've we've banter since we've started working together. Sorry. But now that I'm single, it feels more like flirting and I can't tell if she may actually like me. Here's why. A few days ago, Amanda and our friend were, were going to come to my apartment after work to bake holiday cookies for some other people at work. Oh, so wholesome. Yeah. My homie told me before she left, she was fixing her makeup and putting on perfume before she came over. Oh, the, the fucker even told her to wear protection. Oh my God. I definitely could be reading into that, but my homie has hinted a few times like this. I will add she's currently in a new relationship. Oh my God. And I'm not, <laughs> You should have said this from the jump. Yeah, what? I was like, oh my God, I can't wait. Right. Like, and I'm not someone who wants to home wreck if the home is safe and good. I don't think I'm looking for any kind of commitment, committed relationship right now, but I kind of want to flirt back. Do you think this is a good idea or not? Usually I'm pretty reserved and won't act on things, but I've been feeling like the, the fuck it energy lately. Interested to hear your thoughts. Thank you. Take it easy. Please keep it non- she just likes the attention. Yeah. That's what this is. And you said it's a new relationship. So like she's probably still yearning for like that part of her single life. Yep. You're going to play with fire here. Cause even if you did like I'll put in quotes, win her over and she just leaves this relationship to get to you, she's going to do the same thing to you. Yeah. As and a like, girl, she just likes the attention. I don't want you to um, feel bad for wanting to flirt in general. Oh, like yeah, it's human. You could, yeah, you just got out of this relationship and it's okay to not want something serious and still flirt with other people. Just flirt with someone else. Yes. She like, give your time and your energy to someone else. Mm -hmm. She it just got in a relationship. She's clearly like doing herself up and still flirting with you while yeah. being in another relationship. Like you don't, you don't want to be involved. Yeah. And like, you, you don't seem want the like drama. such a cool guy. Yeah. And like the way that your last relationship got, you guys got, and you it, broke up. So like in a healthy manner, healthy, like you have a good ass head on your shoulders. And for like my faith in humanity and men, especially Please keep, keep it clean. that energy. Keep that energy and spread that like really great male energy to the men around you if possible. Yes. I, and I think you go with your gut here. You wrote in about it, dude. Like yeah. you you know. You you know it feels a little icky, but I get the fuck it energy too. There's there's a fine line there, but um, channel that I, somewhere else. I, I wouldn't like lay it on any more than you have before. Yeah. You know? I don't think now exactly. that you're thinking about it more, you need to like go in heavier especially now you know she's in a relationship i like, wouldn't even enter i would pull back like i wouldn't even course, entertain yeah. it anymore like next time she says like a sexual joke i would pull the like what if your boyfriend here you heard you say that yes. like call her out on her shit like that's not cool like is that what you say to your boyfriend yeah like, shit like that like she she needs to be called out yeah she needs to be called out that's not okay any yeah. women out there listening like don't that's be flirting like cool. that Flirt, like there's a fine line. Yes, flirting is human, but like someone like a coworker who you're seeing every I'm day, assuming five days, five out of seven days a week, like that's your double life. That's right. so, that's another consistent human in your life that you're like subconsciously creating a relationship with yeah. at that point. I always thought it was weird. I saw a TikTok. Sorry, a little side quest. I saw a TikTok the other day of this. It was like a teacher, and they were like going around talking to other teachers, and um this teacher introduced this other male teacher as hit her work husband. I've heard that term work, before. work wife and work husband sounds so like, it's so weird to me. It's so weird. I would hate if my boyfriend came home and was like, Oh yeah, my work wife. Like, no, no, you got one significant other. And if it's me, if it's not me, then we all know what happened with Jim and Pam. Right. You can't have a work wife or a work husband. No. <laughs> you know where this goes. It's weird. It's weird. It yeah. is weird. So don't, don't, don't interact. Go channel like the fuck it energy. You yeah, said you're into out. it. 
go out, go have a night with your boys, like go flirt at the go bar, go flirt like, at the bar, get like pick up a girl, like practice talking to people, like yeah. it's that's fine. You're yes. single, do your thing, have Not a fling, have a situation ship. Not with someone who's in a relationship. Freaking Amanda. And it's even messier that you guys like work together because what if shit does go south? Yeah, it's not worth it. Don't shit where you eat. No. Okay, this next subject flying really got my got my attention. Help. American Horror Story Roommate Edition. Ooh. Hi, guys. Been loving y'all since the beginning of time. Thanks for all the advice so far. This is my first time writing in, so I'm hoping you can call you can help me out. A little backstory. I moved into a townhouse with two girls late last year, and we only have two bathrooms. Therefore, one is shared, with one being mine. Anyway, I typically clean my room once a week and try to keep the bathroom clean, especially after I use it. When I first moved in, I would deep clean the bathroom once every two weeks because I assumed my roommate that I share it with was cleaning the off week. But boy, did I assume wrong. I'm often out of the house for weeks at a time because of work and stuff. Whenever I come back, I notice the mess in the bathroom. I'm talking dirty mirror, hair everywhere, trash can full, bugs flying out of the sink, and unfortunately so much more I won't gross you out with. So it's been over a year and I've kind of ex experimented with the theory that she just waits until I clean it. I've regret regretfully waited over a month to see if she would clean the bathroom Damn. and she never does. Her partner comes over every other or sorry, over every week for multiple days and it and uses it and doesn't clean it either. I'm single and never have guests over. What do I do at this point? It's like, well, I might as well just keep up my pace and clean it once a week. Mind you, we both work from home and use this bathroom equally, except for when we're traveling. Do I just wait six months until the lease is up and pretend like it's not a problem? Do I say something? It's kind of disgusting, but I feel like a housemaid cleaning up after her all the time. We're not very close, so I don't know what to do. Okay, anyway, love you. Bye. Okay, I feel like, unfortunately, you've just gotten yourself into this cycle where she expects it. You've never said anything, yeah, so she's just like... the first thing. you got to say Yeah, something. you have to set some boundaries. You have to set some some house rules. And she's yeah. just gotten to the cycle where her and her boyfriend, like, oh, my roomie cleans it yep. every two weeks. We're good. They're, and it's it's probably that simple. They're it's, probably not thinking, like, ha, this. But like, they're like, oh, cool. She's She just loves cleaning. Like, yep. this is great. Like, but I get, I get you. Like you have to, you have to, you say, have to say like, you can't expect anything to change if you're not even saying that something's wrong. Right. I like, can't read your mind. And even like, I get not wanting to be, you're, you're not close with her. So you don't want to be like super right. confrontational. Right. Just pull the like, Hey, I notice I clean every couple of weeks, but it gets dirty when I'm not around. So like, do you mind picking up the slack when I'm not here? Or like, yep. maybe we can set up a clean schedule so that the like, schedule. yeah, I do it every other thursday and then you do it at the fault like the off week like you said like come up to it like super casually and yeah. pull pull the like hey i noticed that and like maybe she won't feel so like i don't know it won't be like a whole attacking situation or like weird roommate situation brie and liana lived with the roommate and they did a like a full calendar schedule. yeah they had it like in their kitchen and it worked really well for them yeah and if you know it's it's interesting. There's so many types of roommates, like friends like us, where you can just have the conversations or like what you're saying. And that's when I think like really looking at your home as a shared space and like almost how like you switch off things at work. Yep. And like you have the calendar for like, okay, this week so this person brings coffee and like you have to delegate responsibility like that. It is a shared space and you guys don't have a close relationship. So you got to find your thing needs to be set your way of, communicating yep okay next one this is titled the last name conundrum 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 education connection they spelled it c-o-n-d-u-n-d-r-u-m conundrum i think I it's conundrum. It was a conundrum yeah though. conundrum whatever we get what you mean please keep anonymous hi first of all i love the podcast long time listener i thought it might be helpful to hear your advice on just general a general debate topic about this that's been on my mind a lot lately i'm a newly married i'm newly married as of september this year i had always figured i would change my last night last name as that's just what's typically done and the thought of having the same last name as my partner and future children always sounded nice to me mm -hmm. however i am currently a medical resident and my degrees are in my current last name mm -hmm. 
I work under Dr. Current last name. All of the many computer systems and forms and legal documents to allow me to prescribe and care for my patients is all under my current last name. The thought of sifting through all of this in addition to the already difficult process of changing your last name on everything seems entirely too much work and likely to lead to issues. From my point of view, I'd be okay with keeping my current last name professionally and legally and changing it to his last name only socially, which I've already done. Mm. And I've hinted at this with my husband. We've discussed this before, and he pointed out the fact that it would mean a whole lot to him for me to change my last name to his, which I understand and still am considering. He's not of he he is not of the mindset that is an option to change his last name, change his last name to mine, nor do I want that. I've put it off this long, at least, and almost feel my plan may be just to never get it. I don't see this causing any major problems in the relationship, but we do have altering perspectives. Would love to hear your your discourse about this topic and also what your future plans regarding this might be. Thanks so much. You're super valid in this. And I I know so many people who professionally, they keep their maiden name for all the same reasons, whether that's like your LLC or like you're saying all your fucking legal stuff. Like that's super valid. Um. I also get your husband's side of it, but if, if he is okay with like the fact that like it it is really hard to do, I don't want you to feel bad for that either. It's also very common, especially nowadays that women keep their maiden. My sister did when she was married, she, she kept it, but then her kids have her or their dad's last name, last name. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think you're like crazy for that or nothing. I, I guess it just depends though. Like it, I, he, it is like I get his side too. Yeah. I think you just have to almost like sit there and weigh out your options. Like, yeah, go through this process. It's going to be a bitch, but go through the yeah. process of changing your last name with, you know, your, your medical field and all the legalities of it. And it's going to be a bitch, but once it's done, it's done. Like you what might run you into go slow. Too? Yeah. Go like, slow. Just don't do, let it overwhelm you. Like you have to do it all in one week. Right. Start with one, start with like your banks. Yep. Then start with, uh, like other bills and then let the, let the, um, the professional or excuse me, like the, what am I trying to say? Like all the, the doctor part, right. Let that be the last one. Or if your husband's cool with it too, like let the doctor one be the one that's the that only stays, one that stays. But then is that maiden. confusing? Like, are you just like, are you Dr. Johnson? Well, and your then, patients don't know your story. Yeah. Like, to, yeah, you are just Dr. Johnson and they don't. But I wonder fuck. if like legally that matters because you're Dr. Johnson with this hospital, but then your bank statement says this. Right. Like, like I'm you sh- probably got to do right. it's all or nothing. It's all or nothing. Cause then you can, you're living two identities. Right. You're right. It's, it's all or nothing. Yeah. Um, I don't, yeah. Like weigh out your options, go through this. It might take a couple years to be all tidy and clean and done or, do like the half and half deal but then like you the might, social and, the social yeah. and then but then you might have to deal with the fact that your kids have a different last name and you said that's something that you also you value value is having the same last name as your children one day like just weigh out your options and the pros and cons I think like I think from what like how you typed it out and what you said it sounds like it's more of just like a like the work uh the work and and i get it for sure trust me it sounds like a bitch to even deal with i've heard it's a bitch my mom did it like yeah it was a bitch yeah my mom's done it three times wait she twice she so she has her maiden and then she was a mcatee did she go back to her maiden never no she went maxi and then to her okay yeah like she said yeah. it was a bitch though. And like, I bet it's a bitch for her. And so like, she's not a doctor. She's not having to do much more than just like her license and stuff. Right. Like bank shit. But yeah, I get it. But way out you your options. It. It's a one time thing. It's like, like just do if, it. If you value, like if you're old and gray and you want your grandkids to know you as like grandma Johnson or something. Like, I love the Johnson. Here. Right. <laughs> Someone with that last name listening to this is like, <gasps> I'm Johnson. It's happening. I'm grandma Johnson. <laughs> no just like outweigh like later down the line you know that's a good point it's it might be worth it one day uh they also asked about our views on it oh we talk about this a lot actually yeah i absolutely love my last name but it like this sounds so i don't know if he has a cool last name i'm taking it (laughs) it just depends on the last name yeah 
Like, if they're if he has cooler a, than mine, my I'm going to take it. My raw feet are raw dog in the screen right now. <laughs> if, if he has a cooler last name than me, I'm taking it. Yeah. But if he doesn't, like, Tanner did not. No. Tanner's last name was super ugly. <laughs> And I even said, like, I will, if we get married, like, I'm remaining a McAtee. And he, yeah. he I remember he was even, like, I'm I honestly it. down to, like, take it, too. Like, yeah. I'll take your last name. I don't like my last name either. But, like, yeah. Uh, and why am I missing with what's the term? Sixth to eighth grade. Middle school. Oh. In middle school, I dated a guy whose last name was Rose. Oh, I was going to take that. Absolutely. Kristen Harmony Rose. Wow. You sound like a singer. I sound like a vineyard. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you do stunning. yeah it depends. it just depends i love my last name i could see my i don't think i'd ever hyphenate but like unless it was cool yeah like we know a couple like hyphenated last names and they sound like one last name like i it, always think of we went to high school with a brother and a sister and their last name is spellman hess yeah what a that great goes. hyphenated last name it goes and the orpen wilkes yeah that sounds like a full real last name oh Orpen Wilkes. Orpen Wilkes. But you say it fast. Orpen Wilkes. Yeah. Like it is one word. But it's two. It's hyphenated. Spellman has. Yeah. I don't know. It it's depends. It depends. My current boyfriend has a really good last name. So let's cross our fingers. What's it, what is his last name? Yeah. I don't know. It That's going to be one of those things. Like I say all this now, but it's it, once I'm sitting at the wedding table, I'm like, all right, what are we going to yeah. do? You know? I'm sure it's and I also it's like, like the one. Right. And we're lucky we're, we're not in a career where we have to like legally change so many different right. things. And I actually had this thought, one of my coworkers got married and her like, um, her like slack name changed. And I remember thinking like, oh, that was probably such a bitch to go into slack and <laughs> change her last name. But like not. Right. Exactly. Like that's the, that's the length of that I, I'd have to go. Right. And like Instagram. Right. Actually, I probably wouldn't change my handle. No. No. I just nodded. <laughs> no, that's like uh, Jacqueline Hill. She she's fully remarried, mm. but her brand remains Jacqueline Hill. Okay, which is her ex husband's name. Mm, yeah. Interesting. I wonder what that's like. Yeah, I don't know. I f I feel like. I mean, you think of like she like built the like Chris Jenner. Of right. What wasn't there like a period of time where she was trying to go back to Kardashian? Yeah, crazy. After Jenner? And no, her all of her kids were like, no, no you're you not our Kardashian. <laughs> Just because it like. like it was just for business. Yeah. That's so trash. And like she, her point, like what she wrote off of was the fact that like everyone thought she was a Kardashian, which is so not true. Like everyone knows she's Kris Jenner. Yeah. Like you're not pulling a quick one. Like no. we, we get what you're trying to do here. Yeah. I don't know. Last I, names are so weird. Who cares? But just, you can also, did you just guys know this? Cause change I Change it to know. anything you want. You can change your last name to whatever you want. Yeah. There's a whole episode of Friends about it. Phoebe changes her name to Banana Hammock. <laughs> Cute. Great. It goes with Phoebe. Yeah. Like you could just change your last name. Growing up, I wanted to change my first name to Stephanie. Really bad. I'm so glad you did it. <laughs> <laughs> I love that name. But you're so not a Stephanie. Oh, I think it's such a cute name. I love the P-H, like Steph, A-N-I-E. Steph. So Would you go by Steph? Probably. It's my cousin's name. Okay. And growing up, I'd always be like, I want your name. And you, you, you know, when you're a kid and like you want something so bad and you almost think like you, you could want it so bad that it's, it's close enough to get it yeah. to get. I used to want my grandma had blonde hair and blue eyes. And I used to think like, wow, mm. I was so close to getting my grandma's eyes. <laughs> so close. So like I wanted it so bad. I thought it was going to happen. Yeah, like if I just like squeeze. Yep. If I just, like, <laughs> rub my eyes. I want it that bad. I also really liked the name Crystal. Beth? No, but the first name, like I liked my name. If I, I would like you with a K, Stephanie. No, I like to see Stephanie or Crystal. No, I'm not a Crystal. <laughs> I'm not a Crystal. No, no, that one died. That one died with like age eight, but Stephanie yeah. remains. Stephanie remains. Good. God bless. Kristen. I was always, I was Stephanie always Harmony. Fine with my first name. Stephanie Harmony McAtee. That's fine. No. Oh, Too I like e that. E e e That's why I like it. Uh -uh. It's like bouncy. Stephanie, Harmony, McAtee. Well, too late. One day. Next <laughs> next time. <laughs> next time around. Next time around. I better not be a McAtee again. <laughs> God damn. Get me out of this. I wonder if that's ever happened. Yeah, for sure. Uh, the other day when I went to that herbal store. Yeah. She was telling me how. So she's named after her grandma. But her grandma died before she was born. But when she was born, her mom was like, holy shit, like this feels like my mother Whoa. named her. And now like they look the same. They're in the same 
uh, like job field Whoa. that she was in. Like, it, but they never met. So like, I think that can happen. Oh, not to bring it back to the Kardashians, but isn't it? Kim has said that s- people have like, uh, like psychics have gone up to her and her baby and Psalm and I think I've heard said that, uh, that Psalm was Robert Kardashian. Yeah, I think it. I yeah, think it no, you're happen. right. I believe it. Yeah. Why not? You probably would be a McAtee again. I, I've I've done my work here, but you know what? Like, what if, what if it was to show another form of you that your work paid off? I could do that in another lineage. <laughs> you be bestie or something. I just I don't need. <laughs> I just I I did my work here. I'm still doing it. Obviously, like I'm. There's no need for me to pick up slack again in this in this uh, storyline. Yeah, I've done enough. I'm going to be like a Rothschild or something or a Kardashian. <laughs> I'm we one talk, of Kim's we, kids. We talk about the Kardashians a lot. <laughs> do you guys Pop hate culture. it? <laughs> they, they, you can really time in a lot of subjects. What do you think the Kardashians are doing for Christmas? Oh my God. They probably hired Santa himself. <laughs> the real Santa? Yeah. Really? Yeah. They probably like have connect. Santa's real. Yeah. I saw it. As you itch. I know. My legs. Really, I've been itching it this whole episode. I'm sorry, guys. I'm really dry. Uh, I saw this TikTok and this girl was saying, she was probably like our age. And she was like, growing up when I still believed in Santa, there was a girl at school who was like, he's not real. And I, and I was like, what? And she was like, yeah, I asked my mom, like, he's not real. So she went home to her mom. I was like, mom. What the hell? Like Alex said, Santa's not real. And she goes, this is so well played. She goes, okay, honey, I'm going to give you some information. Don't go throw it back in Alex's face. This is something you got to take with like, like grown up. Like you, I'm telling you this as a grown up. Okay. Santa doesn't go to everyone's house. Oh. And there's certain kids that he brings cold to. And when the parents notice, oh, crap, my kid got cold this year they don't want their kid to feel so alienated. So they, they wrap their own gifts. Right. And they, they write from Santa oh. and, and, but the kids are like, what the hell mom? Like, I know like this is the same wrapping paper. Like they, they're skeptical about Santa being real. So they just let them believe he's not real. So they don't take it offensively that they got coal. Love that. Santa's real, honey. You just, but don't go tell her, like, let her believe that. Like, but Santa is real. And he comes to our house. Damn, now she's just going to think that everyone who doesn't believe in Santa is a bad kid. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> but, like, that's fine. <laughs> She'll, like, give it middle school. Right. And the, the, the She'll cat, get cat will be out the bag. Like, I, I don't think she still believes. But that's yeah, cool. That that's cool. a cool way to do it. If cool you want to, like, keep the magic yeah. for longer. It's a cool way to smarter. reverse psychology it a little bit. Work harder. Work smarter, not harder. Like, I, work don't, harder, I don't know not if that smarter. applies. <laughs> well, Merry Christmas, Merry you Christmas. guys. And Happy ha- New Year. Happy Holidays, whatever you're celebrating. Just Enjoy it. Live, laugh, and love. Live, laugh, love. Break up with your boyfriend if he's a dick. You should. Or if he cheats. Mm-hmm. I definitely would. Don't if I be were a you. homewrecker. No. They're not going to change. They're not going to change. And don't be in love with your sibling. That and... <laughs> that's all i have to say about that i love these if we didn't get to your entry send it again send it in again we do this every month the last monday of every month so you always have your chance we will always be here giving you guys advice we love when you guys write in we love doing these and for patreon as always those dms are eternally open yes, for anything we got you every week like say you guys wrote in like we didn't get it through the email send it again through patreon and we got you guys for friday um for also for Patreon, like obviously send in whatever you want help with, but uh, like, what did you get for Christmas? Oh, what yeah. was a good gift that you got this year? Cute. Did any crazy family drama go down on Christmas? Oh. I, it's my favorite. It's Love. my favorite. Love. So so let us know. But um, Merry Christmas, you guys. We will talk to you next week, though. We're not taking obviously not no taking a break breaks. for any of these holidays or anything, which is nice. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, like when we take breaks, it's like nice for like a day, and then I'm like, ah, oh, damn. Like, right like now what, it, now what now what do we do <laughs> they like sleep in one day i'm like okay now what okay well i love you guys so much have a good week have a good week we'll talk to you later love you bye, bye.